Hello and welcome back. In today's a very quick video on the ooh, spicy subject of Ugreen NAS and using third party operating systems your True NAS, your Unraid, your Proxmox, your PFSense, your Open Media Vault, your what? Ever. Because there's a number of users that are looking at the early prototypes floating around that a number of YouTubers, myself included, but a bunch of others out there have got our hands on and we've been demoing a lot of the pre-release hardware and of course the pre-release software, the beta, which I've always said time and time again needs more time in the oven. And although it will no doubt get better, hopefully when this system completes fulfillment on crowdfunding and people start getting it and it goes to traditional retail, until then there are just a lot of users that just want to know that they can use third party operating systems on this series of devices and what exactly is Ugreen's thoughts on this. So that's what this video is about and we're going to break it down into the following compartments. Number one, I'll tell you straight now, you can use third party operating systems. It is not blocked. When we first got hold of the DXP4800, we tried to install some third party operating systems on this and because of the limited time frame for our reviews and taking the device apart, we seem to hit certain hurdles in installing third party operating systems. I can tell you right now, we've got over all of those we went through bios with a fine tooth comb and the following recommendations are what i would put to you if you're going to go ahead and install a third party operating system this is to the rest of the public but of course to other reviewers looking at this video wondering how to do it first up you've got to make your way to bios to do that booting the device up with a kvm setup keyboard video and mouse you're gonna to have to use the f12 and the control key from there thank you to uh logan over on two guys tech who highlighted you have to go into the watchdog settings and disable that next thing you need to do after that however is go ahead if you don't want to go to the trouble of this you know removing the os drive that's inside this you can utilize different options both within the nvme section and the boot section to disable the bay that the m2 nvme inside here that's got the ssd software inside there you can disable that completely if you want to remove it you can do that and reuse that bay personally i think so you don't muck around with your warranty too much you can disable that bay if you choose and then just take advantage of the rest of the storage bays on the system next up in the boot menu make sure that you change the boot order so you want to make sure one if you're going to be using them to envy me in the base of this system say in the case of the dxp make sure that bay has got boot enable on because otherwise if you don't enable boot from that drive it doesn't matter if you install an operating system on it if it's not in the boot sequence and not even as supported as a boot drive within BIOS it will not let you next go into uh, the uh, go and disable the OS boot UEFI settings there because that is what's forcing the uh, Ugreen drive to do the initial booting and if you're going to go to the trouble of installing for example a SATA SSD inside one of the bays and you want to use one of those for like a base level Proxmox or OMV drive there then you can go ahead within the SATA controller menu there and just go ahead and enable SATA boot because by default SATA boot is off on the systems and that's really it uh, other than you know making sure that the USB drive is pr uh, priority number one that's all you have to do those are the main options and from there we did the lot. We went ahead and installed TrueNAS on this system. We went with TrueNAS scale, went through the options, saw all four bays inside the DXP, bunged some SSDs inside there, installed some apps. It ran like a dream. And we had it running for about an hour, hour and a half before we had to move on to something else. Zero stability problems. From there, went into Open Media Vault. Very clean installation there. The same went for when we went for Unraid there as well. Unraid, we went in, installed a bunch of tools there. Ran like a dream. We could allocate drives from every single bay that we installed inside. The same thing went down when we went into Proxmox. Proxmox, we went ahead and stuck in a TrueNAS and a PFSense VM side by side. Ran like a dream, no problems. Ultimately, you can definitely install third-party OSs on site on this. You just need to make sure to go through those rigorous steps I mentioned in BIOS to enable all of those settings. Now, next, can you do it in your warranty sense? Well, things are still a little bit ambiguous there because I would say um, Ugreen are slowly but surely opening the doors to allowing people to install third-party OSs without it harming your hardware warranty. There's been numerous comments within the crowdfunding that's been live for about a week, week and a bit at the time of recording this video, and Ugreen seems to be softening its position in you know reflection of the way people have basically said install third-party OS or I'm gonzo. Um, so that's really good to see. And there are, as I say, there are numerous comments there seemingly indicating that Ugreen will support people's hardware warranty if they use third-party OSs, as long as a third-party OS has not seemingly interfered with the hardware. So for example, if you use third-party OS 
overcooked the CPU or something like that, that would still invalidate the warranty there. So there's still ambiguity and how far a brand is prepared to support it, I'm not sure. But that leads us to the third and I would argue the most important point, and I'm sure you Green themselves watching this would like to know, why do people want to install third party OSs anyway? I'm sure as far as you, Green, are concerned, they're rocking out a hardware and software solution. Surely you want to use this. You've just paid for the software. Why aren't you using it? And although I don't fully agree with that, I can see their point of view. However, and again, I'm probably talking to you, you, Green, but I might be talking to other people that would wonder why this is such a sticking point for some users. Well, it's because the Ugreen UGOS NAS software, although it's you know, it's the, the fundamentals are there, there's still a lot of gaps. There's a lot of gaps with regards to virtualization, there's a lot of gaps, a lot of security measures, uh, right one, three, many support and stuff like that. On top of that, well, they have recently added uh, container support uh, via the Docker application that's now available on there. There's still a multitude of different gaps. And if you want to use, for example, Plex Media Server, when we did our Plex text for, test, for example, you have to run it in Docker. Some people like to run Plex in Docker and good for you. But a lot of other users like there to be an app in the app center that's being moderated, that's being certified and checked for any security vulnerabilities like any other app and kept within the app center so it is rigorously checked by the brands themselves. And of course, one click install. How easy is that? But by not having that and making users go down the Docker route for predominantly all of the more interesting applications, you're making them wonder what's in your software for them. And the same goes for baseline services. Right now, the UGOS NAS software doesn't have an iSCSI target or LUN tool. Now, a lot of you are gonna go, who cares? That sounds enterprise as hell. I disagree. If you're a photo video editor and you plan on using this system as targeted storage to um, you know, edit your 1080p, your 4K, your RAW, chances are you're going to have to mount the storage in this. And if you're going to use SMB and mapping of drives, not all video or photo editing software plays nice with SMB mounted drives. A lot of them require you to trick the operating system to see the NAS as a logical drive, to see it as a local drive. And with that, that's where iSCSI LUNs via targets are incredibly appealing, something you can't get on this, but you can get on third party operating systems and even containerized applications that can bridge the gaps. But nonetheless, because UGOS doesn't include that, that's another reason why users are going to be looking at third party OSs. And you know, notwithstanding MB, notwithstanding Plex, notwithstanding Jellyfin, notwithstanding Tailscal, those staple applications, which until they bring out their own proprietary app on here, people are forced to go the diggity dog route of going to a container or going for a third party OS. Same goes with game servers as well. There's lots of reasons why another user would look at Ugreen's operating system and go, you know, it's pretty and that, but this is better. And then that gets us on to the age of the operating system. You're trusting all of your data on some software that you're not confident in. Then that's why people go towards uh, true NAS scale, true NAS core and uh, Unraid, although arguably, True NAS scale isn't the oldest. I think it might be the youngest of the three there. It's still a well-established software. And that's that trust. And if people know they're going to buy the hardware, but they can use the software they can trust, that's going to be a... Oh, that's going to save the old worries on the chest there, isn't it? So you, Green, on the one hand, I do hope you make your position on third-party operating systems incredibly clear on your system, I mean to the letter, it does look like you are going a good way. And I think a lot of you out there that are considering this system, but we're on the fence about it because of that third party OS support. I'm not gonna say it's all tied up and sorted, but I will say it's very much on the way. And I think things are looking up. So do, do keep an eye on it. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. I hope this has helped in some small way. Um, if it has, let me know. If you do end up using a lot of the hints or guidance in this video, Give us a back link, let us know, and of course, shout out to anyone else that's assisted us in the last week or so. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.